Well, look, we're live on a beautiful Saturday. Welcome to another exciting episode of the Andre the Beast Brain Show with once again the fashion diva herself. I'm getting good at this. The fashion diva herself, the philanthropist, Yolanda M. Smith. What's up? What's up, Dre? That is, where did I, I get that title? Over there. Hey, I got a new title. You coming in all g up, <laughs> making me look bad, man. Listen. You know, when you're a brand, you got to represent. Somebody said that the other day. They go, you show up. I mean, we just be waiting because we don't know what you're going to wear and how you coming in representing because you always got your little stuff on point. I like it. I like the cuffs. Uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got got the little cuffs. Got my little shoes matching. Yeah, you You know, but, you know, it's just a little casual Saturday. We just here chillaxing. But we're not just here to relax. We're here to really talk about something that you're passionate about, and that's about branding. You know, So let me take the viewers down the path to understand what the show is about today because it's real crucial because I know how important the word branding is to you and how you want to teach people the importance of branding. You started out, Yolanda started out with the book, the award-winning book, Reputation (laughs) to Awards. Let's call it what it is, Reputation to Award. This was actually the book that I read when I first got into podcasting, and, and I think they know the story. I read it, middle of the night, I, I called you and was like, tell your husband this ain't a booty call, <laughs> but I got it. I got an idea. Um, you want to be on the show. I want you to be on the show because this book was so impactful because it was, it taught me that I was already a brand, but it basically, with your help, your courses, and being a part of the show, Help, help me elevate, elevate the brand, brand and, and to, to really magnify the importance of a brand. brand. Right. But, but tell, tell the viewers, viewers about, let's start out with this book first before we get into exactly what the show is about. What inspired this book before we get into your new venture? Okay, that's fair enough. So, so Reputation... I thought you did not. You did catch me. You, 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 Okay. So Reputation to Reward was actually inspired from the fact that I think that a lot of times as just everyday individuals, whether you work in corporate America, you're a coach, you're an entrepreneur, you don't really think about the fact that you personally are a brand. We look at brands as things like products, right? Right. So, or or major companies. So you take a Nike and the swoosh and you go, that's a brand, you know what I mean? You look at somebody like uh, the former Steve Jobs or an Apple, that's a brand, but you never looked at yourself individually as a brand. So what I wanted to help people to understand is that personal branding is truly about how you articulate your value to other people, how you help other people understand what your superpowers are, what you do, and why that's important. Because here's the deal. If you think it's reserved for people like athletes, celebrities, and politicians, you're so wrong. Right. Now, it used to be that you would find those people put more emphasis on it. They hired PR people to really help them elevate and, and maintain positive reputations and things of that nature. Mm-hmm. You know, run defense, manage crises, you know, especially in politics. You know, you know there's a lot of crises. We won't go there today. Okay, okay. <laughs> But but I think that as the as the everyday person, you did not think that that related to yourself. Right. And that is such a myth. Because think about it. If you are not being the CEO of your own brand, if you're not managing your own relationship and the collateral that is is comes behind you, then you're allowing somebody else to do it. Plain and simple. A prime example. And. I watched air and I thought so much about you because at first I wasn't going to watch that show mm-hmm. and I watched it and it was amazing. You said the, 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 the swish and, mm-hmm. and you had a competition of three brands, mm-hmm. Converse, Reebok and, and Nike. Nike, but nobody really knew who Nike was, but they was only affiliated with the swish in the running. But it's amazing how one guy, we won't get into to the yeah. movie, but the importance of that one guy. Mm-hmm. Sometimes sometime your brand can amplify totally. s- somebody else's brand. Totally. Like the one individual did with Nike. Well, we know who it is, yeah. but yeah. you don't want to mention Michael Jordan. 
Uh, okay, okay. I meant to. Am I going? Michael look, Jordan. Does he? Now you need to pay me, Mike. No, I'm just. <laughs> no, I mean that's true. So, so the point there is, is that you can have a personal brand. You can have positive attributes about you. Your that. Why do you think that companies do endorsements? Yeah. They endorse because they know that these individuals, whether they're celebrity athletes or whomever, have a level of influence, and they want the followers that follow them like adidas deal with run dmc and it was like adidas didn't even know who run dmc was no and then you know how they started doing the the liquor beverages with that with the rappers and all this and then they started having you know anyway we're not going down that road but the point <laughs> is but the point is because they do have a level of celebrity right. which creates a following and an influence but we're talking about it as it relates to the everyday person right. and so as it relates to the everyday person what that means for you is that if you're able to be able to tell your story if you're able to be able to make connections and people understand the things that you do extremely well then you can be tapped on the shoulder for those things. Let and me ask a question real quick. you can quick. create influence. But don't you find that the, 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 the problem that we have, individuals, is that we really don't take the time to know what we're good at because we're too busy. Let me rephrase this. So you know where yeah, I'm going to no, go. I already know where you're going to go. School Look. teaches us how to be laborers. Oh, geez. They don't teach us how to be entrepreneurs. So... How would you tell I had to somebody drink that Starbucks yeah. coffee? We like to give shots out to Starbucks, Starbucks at this at this time. What, what which one are you drinking? I have the flat white with hazelnut. I I make my own concoction. <laughs> okay, that does not surprise <laughs> the audience, I'm sure. But but I got, yes, you're right. Okay, so what what you're saying is why do, why would we do that and know what we're good at when we're too busy making somebody else's stuff good? And a lot of times and, we don't know what we're good at. Sometimes you don't, but that's why you get coaches like me to help you pull that out. Explain to the viewers what a coach is. So a coach is a person that you would actually retain to be able to help you to achieve certain goals and visions that you have in your life. And ideally what you do is you're trying to find someone who has been where you want to go or has very uh, 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 specific skill sets that you want to obtain and they can guide you, you know, and, and, and provide direction. Now, don't get it twisted. Right now, coaching is a huge business. It's not regulated and everybody wants to be a coach. Is and, there a difference between a coach and a mentor? Yes, a mentor. Now, this is just my opinion. So, I mean, you know, you can look it up and kind of get a formal definition. But typically for me, <clears throat> I have mentors outside of my sphere of, of, of expertise. But typically when I had mentors, when I worked in corporate America for several decades, I would find somebody that had, had already done what I'm trying to do, were very well connected, had influence, right, and, and could help me navigate. Wait so a if, minute. Repeat those key points because I think people need to clearly understand there is a difference between a mentor because you just mentioned some key attributes that individuals need to look for when they're looking at a life coach and what were those again well as a as a mentor so coaching is a little different than mentoring although they can blur lines because your coach can be your mentor okay. you know what I mean but but typically a mentor is not necessarily a paid relationship a coaching, a coaching arrangement, arrangement is typically a paid relationship, and we're trying to get you somewhere. We have some very specific things that we want to accomplish, and we're going to help guide you to get those things done, right? Okay. So we really give you processes, systems, methodologies, techniques to get you where you want to go. A mentor, on the other hand, is somebody that's just already made it to where, where you choose to be. And what you're doing is you're kind of picking their brain. Okay. They, they like you. They want to see you do well. They'll knowledge share with you. They'll introduce you. They'll to introduce you to people, but they're not sitting down and mapping out your goals and creating mm -hmm. strategies and helping you. You know, it's a little bit different. To they, they can tell you what they are. They can tell you you need this if you want to get to this level. This is what you may need to do, or you know, if you want to do this, you need to know this person, this person, this person. I mean, they, it's kind of that that person that literally again helps you navigate through a, a, a structure. Now, that's in the corporate world. 
you can have mentors that exist in maybe associations that you belong to that mm -hmm. will help you to be able to connect through those associations or you can have them in your specific field of expertise you know so if you have got expertise and you do it as an entrepreneur doesn't mean you can't find a mentor that like you can have a mentor in speaking you know but you can also have a speaking coach and okay. that's somebody that you would pay to be a part of their program and and you get very specific skill sets techniques opportunities all that sort of stuff so it's a little bit different but it definitely can get blurred what was the life changing moment for you this just didn't happen overnight you must have had skill sets or something place some type of structural in a map before you decided to write the the, the first book yeah. Okay. So let's let look. Maybe, I'm, I'm hitting you with the yeah, question. Look, got my, okay. Got my automatic. <laughs> let's take it back a step. Okay. So first of all, when you think about how did I even get into this? Right. Okay. Right. Let's let's take it back. Then it'll make sense. Because if okay. I just start with the book, it ain't gonna. It's right. not gonna make sense. Okay. So let's take it back. It was about 2013, and I was the chair of a nonprofit called Girl Talk. Shout out to my girl, Sonia Cook. She's doing the darn thing with these girls. But Girl Talk Incorporated, and I was the chair of their board. But I didn't want to just sit around and do all the administrative stuff and fundraise. I wanted right. to roll up my sleeves and engage with the girls. So when I started researching, how could I provide them some tools and resources that could really help them where they were to be able to have a level of confidence, to be able to know how to utilize their voice, to understand how to be their best self. Well, I stumbled up on personal branding and my research. So then I researched some more and I said, I kind of like this. Yeah, mm. this kind of fits and aligns with what I want to do. You probably lit up like crazy, I can well, tell. Well, <laughs> I did, I did. And then I created a workshop. So okay. I created a workshop because just years before I had created a whole curriculum, master level curriculum, for the company that I was working for. So I knew how to put together a workshop. I had done a whole curriculum. So I put together the workshop. But let's stop one second. People need to also understand you're very well educated. Well, yeah, but let's Give talk. Give shots out to what it is. You just didn't just. Well, I have been in the industry for years and I started my career in sales and in pharmaceutical industry. I started in sales and I have to admit mm -hmm. because I had a knack, a gift of gab, I had a knack. A and gift I, of what? Gab. I could talk. I could run that mouth. You know, I could talk. I did. This, this is funny. So I'm going to digress. So last week I got an award, right? You know, I got congratulations. I got, thank yeah, you. I yeah. Got the I like the dress excellent. too. Thank you. Thank I like you. the other appreciate outfits it. too. Pre appreciate it. Yeah. Appreciate. It. I was doing my dang old thing yeah, last I saw week. You, you know, doing your shit now. Okay, but this was funny. So I'm getting up and I'm giving my acceptance speech, right? And so one of the things that just hits me impromptu is you have to tell people, and it was really kind of a dig to my teachers. I don't even know if they still live in, but I always was told I talk too much. <laughs> she, you know, on the report card, she talks too much. She's disruptive to the other kids. She talks too much. Little did they know. But it was funny because my mom would get me, but she really wouldn't get me. Now nah, you can't be doing all that talking. But baby, you can be anything you want to be. be. You can, so she's building the confidence <laughs> up while they over here talking about So fast forward to years later, <laughs> ha, ha, ha. My talking too much got me a Speaker Excellence Award. But none, none. I think it's important to share your voice, which is right. also what branding is about okay so okay. wait a minute okay let's back up. i got you going yeah you did but anyway so i started delivering these workshops and what happened is the parents started showing up and then they were like we need this stuff if you give it to us we could give it to our daughters but we don't even know this stuff right and i pondered that and i was like what and that was my aha moment and i said you know what you need to level this thing up you can take this to a professional level you know, and see how it hits. Right. And I had an opportunity, I think it was about maybe 2015, 2016, at the company I was working for, they asked me to do a couple workshops at a major forum. It was an all day event for one of the employee resource groups. You guys, I get on stage and do my personal branding presentation speech and killed it. 
I mean, I knew I was killing it. Let me tell you, there's a certain thing when you know what you know. Did, and you, did, I, you, did you get the old Hulk feeling where you was I, like... It, it was just is... like you was in the zone. Yeah. And I, was, and I could tell. And when the people were engaging back and forth with me, by the time I was done delivering the presentation, there was literally a lot... I'm not making this up. There was a line around the stage. These people had no clue that I actually worked for the company. They thought I was a hired speaker that had come into the company and wanted more. I All mean, right just moment. Uh, totally. Yeah. And that's when I knew this is what I was destined to do. Okay. I knew it. I knew it from that day. And I never stopped. I mean, I didn't monetize it until 2018. And, and that's when I actually created my business. And the business was created because I had a situation at work where uh, I had a, 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 a supervisor, a leader that didn't like me. And she was destined to destroy my career. She tried hard. Hold that thought. Hey, this is the Andre the Beast Crazy Show with my beautiful co-host, Yolanda M. Smith, talking about branding for success, how to overcome the whole nine yards. Like, share. Comment. Comment. Subscribe. Subscribe. <laughs> Do the whole nine yards. <laughs> Okay, so you, yeah. you just take us back. You say you you got into now you're in the workplace. We didn't got to mention where you work. You, well, no, you well, had you had somebody that was a she that's was a hater. What it is. She a was hater. a hater. You know what I call it? A distraught employee. She, she was, was a hater. hater. I, mean, I mean, I don't, I don't know, know why this woman didn't, didn't know me. Didn't, didn't. I mean, she, she didn't. And I'm telling the story. And and I don't work there anymore, so I can tell the story. I don't mention names or anything like that. But no, she didn't. But the point I want to make is I'm not going to get into the all the details of of how she didn't like me. I want you as the viewing audience to understand right. not, not everybody's going, going to be your cheerleader. So this, this is, but well, here's the point I'm going to give you. So, so she ran around digging and poking and prodding, trying, trying to find anything she could that could actually destroy me, right? I knew I hadn't done anything wrong, so I sat back, let her run her, her thing. It was all good, you know, not tripping. Then HR calls me one day and has me come to the office. I'm excited thinking this is going to be over and found out that they actually demoted me and took my team away from me. And I'm sitting here devastated like, you did what? For what reason? Yeah. You know, so for so fast forward, I had months to a couple months. I spent really trying to process this and think about what it was I was going to do. And I, in my heart, I didn't want to go back. But I figure I had two things I had to consider. One, was I going to take any accountability? And number two, was I going to give one person power over my destiny? So to number one, the question was, yes, I took some accountability because, guys, this is what I didn't do. What I didn't tell you about the story is that they had moved our team based on a restructure to another department. I was so focused on my team that I was not building relationships with the new people that, I mean, with the people that existed. We were the new people, but I didn't build the relationships I needed to build. So it was also a learning lesson at the same time after you basically went back and reevaluated. Because I didn't question. tell my story. I okay. wasn't telling my story. So when I didn't tell my story, I gave somebody else the, the narrative. The, 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 okay. She ran the narrative and they didn't know me. So they believed her. And people have a tendency to do that in life. And I think a lot of people yeah. don't understand it. They go, well, why is that person? Not? Because you let somebody else take tell the narrative. Me. So the question is going back to what you said, you said when you read the book, he, this is what Andre said. I realized that I was a brand. You absolutely are a brand. So the question is, are you being intentional and strategic with your brand? Right. Or are you lie on other people? And you know what? What you said, relying on other people, you was right because I remember them. We won't mention names, but yeah. I remember individuals trying to take my my brand and 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 redirect it. Yeah. To where it was for them, and I'm like, oh, hold down! I don't want to be boxed into one category. Right. That's right. because I do this doesn't mean that I'm one dimensional in who I am, right. you know? So, um, that book was so inspirational to me. I was yeah. like, I'm gonna write my own narrative. I'm tired of other people. Correct. So saying, so, saying what they want to right. say to write my story. Right. So, so I had to take accountability. Then number two, I decided hell to the now. I wasn't giving nobody power over right. my destiny. I, how dare you? Who do you think you are? Right. And so that was at that moment that I decided I'm going to just be humble because you guys, there's no ego in branding. Let's be clear. You know, sometimes it's about the value you deliver to other people, how you show up. How are you showing up? Are you being authentic? Are you creating the genuine connections? So I just sucked it up 
uh, held my head up high, walked back into them doors and was determined I was going to change the narrative. But in the meantime, I wasn't no dummy. Let me just tell you. I said, I'm going to start my business because I'm never going to put my eggs in one basket and give somebody that much control over my life. That was and definitely a game changer for you. how Branding for Success was birthed. Okay. In the meantime, then, I also started uh, to write the book. Because I knew that based upon what had happened to me, I was going to shout it to the mountaintops, the importance of having a personal brand. But here's the other key. You ready for this one? Mm -hmm. I was, it wasn't until I was mid-career that I had a coach, a sponsor, or a mentor. Nobody. And think about this. You've been in pharmaceutical sales. I was successful. I had gotten promotions. My career was on a trajectory going up until I met this woman. But, but, but do you know that? Uh, up until uh, just years before meeting her, nobody had ever told me that I needed a coach, a sponsor, or a mentor. And why do you know. think that? It's the world's best kept secret, I guess? Well, you know what? It's kind of like this. If they deem you to be a high potential, they'll pour into you. I came into the organization mid-career, so perhaps they said she's got great skills. We'd love to have her, but we're not giving her that level of 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 of, uh, of guidance and information mm -hmm. but even the companies that i worked for before that still never said you need to make sure you always have a mentor or a coach somebody that guides you i can only imagine let me tell you it, it's not even about being smart it's not even about being educated i had so much curiosity I wanted to learn. I wanted to do things. Curiosity you know, didn't kill this it cat. Didn't, no, not this one. <laughs> you, but, but you know what I'm saying? I had so much drive. Yeah. I knew I, what I wanted in life. Do you think you that the drive intensified based in the corporate thing before that led to the book? Did you think had that not happened, the, the distraught employee, the hater, do you think that might have fueled you had that not had happened? Do you think that, it might, I know it's hypothetical, but do you think that maybe that changed your outlook and if that didn't happen? Everything happens for a reason. Right, right. Okay. But do you think that? Let that me that just, fueled you. Let's be I real. I think it, it was in me because remember what I told you, 2013, it had been building up. Right. I think what happened at that point is that, and, and this is the honest uh, truth. I've prayed and I say, Lord, help me understand what am I supposed to get out of this? Mm -hmm. Andre, up until that point, things have been easy for me. I mean, I would just go in, I would perform, I would perform well. People liked me, I would get things. I didn't have a real story to tell. Okay. Do you, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. I couldn't tell. I, I had not, I had made the connections, I was doing it, but it's only when you face adversity. And adversity and was the hater. you're able to channel that inner beast mm -hmm. and get back up that you can then tell people, listen, I followed my five essential steps of a powerful brand. I did my brand signature formula stuff. I followed my own proven processes and it worked right. because what happened is that subsequently a couple years later, I get a call from a person and says basically, hey, there's a, they, they got a new department that's been approved and you'll be the perfect leader to lead and staff that team. And I'm like, quit playing. They're like, no, I'm serious. I want you to do this, do do ABC. Next thing I know, I was promoted back to level, building a team all the way from the ground up. Now, if I was that bad at the same company, yeah. how the heck would you, you give, give me uh, another, another leader opportunity and build, build the team, team from, from the ground, ground up? The universe is a motherfucker, you know that, right? Well, but that just shows you yeah. what, what a powerful brand will do for yeah. you. And and, and, and and so then it just built that credibility even 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 more. And I just sit here today saying I walked out of corporate America January 31st running this business full time. You know what I mean? Now, running Branding for Success, your book is, is, is definitely a bestseller. How can the, the cause I would, this is what I would recommend. And I, you tell me if I'm wrong, <laughs> you know, and you said it, there's courses and steps, there's a blueprint to success. And to me, even with the, the show, I followed your blueprint. I followed the blueprint. And the first blueprint was definitely reputation, reputation to reward. Because that explains it. That it tells explains you it. why it's important, what benefits you can get from it. And then it goes, takes you through the exercises to start really b building your confidence to tell people who you are. Because innately, 
we're not comfortable talking about ourselves. I think I just mentioned that to somebody before you got here. <laughs> yeah, we're not comfortable talking yeah. about ourselves. Now, I could say I could talk about you all day long and tell the world how wonderful you are and how you've overcome and the stuff that you've done. What about the bad stuff? But then when it well, I'll tell them that too. Uh, you know, we keep it real on, on this show. But the point is, is that when it comes to talking about yourself, you're not. But if you're not your own cheerleader, who's going to be? And so what happened? Let's talk about the next one. So that's how reputation to reward. Wait a minute. Let me let me let me introduce the next the next. OK, one. you got it. Yeah, I'm right. running this one now. Oh, sick it now. <laughs> so viewers definitely get reputation. Show. Well, how can they get this book first? Because I'd rather for them to start with understanding the mission. So how can they get this? Yeah. So reputation and reward, you can get it off of my website, YolandaMsmith.com. Uh, YolandaMsmith.com. And it's under the book section. Or you can get it on Amazon. Either or. Okay. Now, you get a signed copy if you go to my website. Where's my signed copy? You done had it three times <laughs> over. He keeps giving them away. <laughs> Okay. It was a stack of books in here. We down to one book, two books. Two, two, you got two. Two. I just keep saying, where are the books going? He like, I don't know. Where are the books going, Dre? I don't. know. People asking for them. <laughs> I want. I want every. Our job here with the Andre the Beast Crazy Show and the I Am Beast Network is to educate, empower, empower, and entertain. Okay. And when somebody comes in here and says. Yolanda is Yolanda here, and I go no, and they say, "Can we get her get her book?" I'll be like, "Here you go," and it's autographed. <laughs> Anything. Come to, help to the studio. We're at the Sheridan yeah. Hotel. This is our studio. We are at the Sheridan Hotel, Keystone at the Crossing, and I guess Andre will just give away a book. Yeah, I give away a book. <laughs> now let's talk about another part of the Brandon for Success Collection, which is your new book, Becoming Unforgettable. You can pick this. We'll tell you how to get this at the end. I um, this is I haven't read it yet. I just got it today. I just got it today. Is it signed? No. It will. It be. will be. I won't give this one away. I promise. Yeah. <laughs> so tell me, from branding to success, to becoming unforgettable. From reputation to reward. To reputation to reward to becoming unforgettable. Yeah. Explain this one. So I. So once you. At the end of the day, one of the five steps is brand mastery, right? So you go through the, the different steps. It's all about authenticity, you know, your value. You have to understand your unique value proposition. What's your story? How do you cultivate that story? Then uh, uh, create a positive digital footprint, and then it's mastery. Become unforgettable, the seven strategies to scale your brand for maximum impact really talks about seven strategies that can help you then to start to master the brand because it's one thing to sit there and do the work to put it into play right and that's the beauty of reputation of war it's going to tell you what you need to do to put it into play and social media in this digital environment is no joke right that right. that's a table stake but it's another thing to think about then what do i really do how do i keep this thing alive how do i really amplify it in the marketplace so that people know who I am because at the end of the day if they don't know you what Grant Card don't say they can't flow you right <laughs> yeah they don't know you they can't flow right. you and I tell people all the time it's not what you know it's not even who you know but it's who knows you huh. <laughs> I, I don't care who, I thought about I that don't care who you know but who knows you because right. you know how we'll be all the time oh yeah I know them you they don't even know you from Adam right so right. if they don't know you it really doesn't matter who you know right Okay, I never thought about it yeah. like that. Yeah, and so this book really talks about seven things that you need to be doing to really be able to amplify that brand out there. It talks about power of networking, right? It really talks about creating that compelling story. We go back into the story again because it's one thing to have your brand signature formula, I mean statement, that's where you kind of give your elevator pitch, right? right. My name is Yolanda M. Smith. I'm a people growth leader and brand therapist, helping entrepreneurs and coaches, you know, to get and stay in business. You know, I right. help through the power of branding and business strategies. I help them to be able to have influence, income and impact. You know, that's my brand statement. Right. But when you start talking about your story, that story that I could have just got very detailed about the story I just shared. You need to have a story. People need to understand your stories because that's when the connection happens. Right. And you know what I say about connection, right? Do you remember? 
If you don't know, tell me. <laughs> well, if people know you, like you, and will connect with oh. you, then those are the people that will sponsor, sponsor you, hire, hire you, promote you. you. Promote. What else? Marry you and loan you money. It don't get better than that, Andre. They gonna marry you and loan you some money. I can use all of the above. <laughs> I can use all of the above. So that's what that is. And then it, it then it really gives you some questions because I'm a coach, right? I'm not gonna do the work for you, but it gives you some questions to consider. And then also has a section there where I'm really big on taking action, right? Action takers. Action takers, you know, are you, money makers. So what do success, you, love, speed. Get your ninety day commitment. What do you staff. find one of, without giving all of your secrets? Mm -hmm. What is the out of the seven? What do you find that the two things that people struggle with the most in trying to understand how to let's say their brand is already there, but they don't have the seven. Out of the seven, what are the two things that you encounter the most from individuals? 